Women of 2A take center stage in Chapel Hill with the defending champs back to continue their reign against a new high school playing in its infancy. It's the 2023 NCHSAA Basketball Championships presented by myspot.nc.gov. The 26-3 Salisbury Hornets aiming to repeat against the 27-3 Seaforth Hawks. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome inside the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, with Jason Halter, Patrick Keyes. And for the seventh time, the Salisbury Hornets play for a state championship. They've won five and Seaforth, the school that just opened its doors two years ago, already playing for a state championship. How did that happen? Well, it's amazing what Seaforth has been able to do with such a young team to get to this point. Second year, they've got a talented group of sophomores and freshmen and a superstar player. Over for Salisbury, it's that veteran leadership that's really helped out. Right, let's take a look now at the West Shore Homes players to watch for this. Brought to you by West Shore Homes, bringing happiness to every home. Well, Kyla Bryant can score from all three levels, and tonight she's going to have to look for a shot, be aggressive, driving in, dishing off to her teammates on the defensive end. She's really important out on the perimeter, trying to create havoc. And for Seaworth, talented sophomore and Gabby White, big time prospect, 16 points per game, nine boards. She does it all. She's the heart for the team, so competitive and she really sets the pace for them. She's gonna have to early on look for that outside shot. She's gonna face double teams, but she's gotta create. All right, the Hornets out of the Central Carolina Conference, Seaforth out of the Mid-Carolina, one of the keys brought to you by Ingalls Food for Thought. Low prices of the same. Well, Salisbury must get back in transition. Seaforth gonna push the tempo and then movement without the basketball. They need to really create spacing and take good shots. For Seaforth, active hands on defense, making sure they jump in the passing lanes and they're physical. Also, patience for the best shot. They've gotta get good looks here today. They've got outstanding outside shooters, but they need to be patient and effective on offense. All right, the defending champion, Salisbury Hornets. They beat Farmville Central for the title last year. Take it on the Seaforth Hawks. A more remarkable story you won't find. Two years since the school opened its doors. They're playing for a state title at 2A. Tip off, Salisbury, Seaforth, next. Two-way women's championship from Chapel Hill. Look inside the huddle of the Salisbury Hornets. Out of the Central Carolina Conference night, their head coach, Lakai Bryce, won the title last year over Farmville Central. And what a run they have been on over the last couple of years. 54 and four over the last two seasons. Now on the other side, fix your eyes on the youngest remaining head coach in these championships in North Carolina, 30-year-old Charles Bird, second year as the head coach for the second year school, the Seaforth Hawks. Six years ago, he was a middle school girls coach at Fuquay of Arena. He got the job coming from Jordan Matthews as the principal from Jordan Matthews came to Seaforth to be the principal for the Hawks. He came with. Look at him, 30 years old, coaching Seaforth in the state championship. They are in the home whites, Salisbury in the traveling dark uniforms. And here we go for the women's 2A top. Just a remarkable kind of polar opposite stories of the histories of Salisbury and Seaforth. It really shows you there's different ways to get to this point of the season, different styles and good possession here for Seaforth starting off in the 2-3 zone defense. And look at the starting lineup brought to you by myspot.nc.gov. Take control, update your COVID-19 protection. There's the starting five for the Seahawks. Gabby White, number three, averaging about 16 a game. And the Hawks on offense. Ajaye, as we get to travel. So turnovers on both sides to begin the game. Our real question here for the Hawks is, but for a school who doesn't know any better, school just opened up in the fall of 2021. How are they going to handle playing here already in a game like this as we take a look at the starting five for Salisbury, also brought to you by myspot.nc.com. A yeah, veteran group for Salisbury, but it, you know, I think they need to get off to a good start. That's going to be really important for both teams, but especially for Seaforth, your first appearance in the state championship. I mean, hey, there are programs around the state that have played basketball for 30, 40, 50 years and never been here. They're here in year two with a roster comprised of all sophomores and freshmen with the exception of two players who are juniors. Runner by Michaela Noble. 
Missed the shot. C4 at the rebound. And I think it says a lot about the players, the talent, but also Charles Bird, what he's been able to do to hold this group. Danny White follows her own miss. Kick in the corner. A giant. Third crack. White. The kick out. This is Peyton Collins. And will stay with C4. Salisbury's got a box out. Going to work on the glass. Gabby White is continuing to fight. There's Coach Bryce. Been in this position before. The regional semifinal, the Hornets knocked off Shelby 46 to 4. They're a pretty low scoring team. Meanwhile, the Seaforth Hawks, they're the five seed out of the East. In the third round, they had to take down number four, St. Paul's, on the road. In the next round, they took down the top seed, Bettingfield. And then in the regional final last week, took down the two seed, North Pitt. So they've taken on one, two, and four. They've earned this spot here in the championship. Offensive rebound again for the Hawks. If there's any kind of bout of early nerves for the Hawks, this is one way to eradicate it, right? Crash the offensive yeah. glass, which they've done five times already. Well, that's a good sign for them, being aggressive. Ajaye, first points in school history in the state championship game. Well, Ajaye, patient, Went for the play to develop. There's a clear spot in the paint, and she just took it. So two and a half minutes for the game's first points. Tyler Bryant, short on a three. This is freshman Catherine Leonard, number 11, bringing the ball up for Seaforth. Two freshmen in the starting five for Seaforth. Gabby White, sophomore. Good handles. Tough shot, missed on the baseline. And Noble, the rebound for Salisbury. Solid defense from Malfour. And the season for Salisbury started 8-0. Lost two games within a three-day span of Panther Creek, who just claimed the 4A championship earlier today. And then they lost to North Pitt. Lost a game to a team up in Virginia on January 7th, sent them. They've won 15 straight. Turnover back to the Hawks. Whites. And another offensive rebound for the Hawks. Collins. Short range makes it for love. And seven boards against only one for Salisbury. They're coming out here. They're missing some shots, but they're getting those rebounds. A nice finish from Collins. Five offensive rebounds in the first four minutes for Seaford. <laughs> well, the Hawks, and they took on some big schools in the non-conference, including an 11-point loss against Chapel Hill, a team that reached the 4A regional semifinals. Since that loss in early February, 10 straight wins. Four minutes gone by in the opening quarter. So far, Seaforth, a two-year school with a four-point lead in their first ever appearance. Four-nothing lead for the Seaforth Hawks. In their first ever state championship game in their third ever school season, right? White plays a cross court. This is Leonard. You would have expected a slower start for Seaforth compared to Salisbury with the experience and the history that they've horned to have. Skip to White, open for three. First seven belong to Seaforth. Well, they've been efficient, but also just what's the level of calmness they have? Not rattled at all by this environment, this moment. Passing the ball, sharing it, taking good shots, and doing all the little things. Three pointer sponsored by West Shore Home, bringing happiness to every home. They play the soft spot of the zone. Shot blocked straight down by Jocelyn Jesner. Up ahead, opportunity here, and a foul will send the Hawks to the line. Peyton Collins will shoot a pair. <laughs> Using a fast break is an opportunity to push the pace. A nice pass from Gabby White over to Peyton Collins. He's been very active in this game and one of the captains on the team. A lot of production out of Collins this season. At the Hardy's free throw line. One more coming. Hardy's the home of made from scratch biscuits and charbroiled 100% black Agnes beef thick burgers. Feed your happy. More coming for the sophomore, Peyton Collins. 
Eight nothing. Salisbury's got to get their offense going. Their best offensive player, Kyla Bryant. Can get her some shots and the zone defense. And she's asking for the ball. Yeah, kind of throwing them a little bit of a curveball. And Bryant takes the shot. She was the MVP of last year's championship win for the Hornets. Slow start for Salisbury altogether. They missed their first five shots. Long skip. Collins is open. And it's tipped out. And no decision yet. It will stay with C4. And I know there's a cross court pass there. The Hornets have to defend the perimeter. They've got to come out and help on that shot. Easy look for Collins. Jay, there's a 10 1 rebounding edge already yeah. in favor of C4. And there's got to be more physical play from the Hornets right now. They cannot allow that pace to keep up. Sidney Ballard is on the floor for Seaforth, replacing Jasmine. Quickly moving first quarter. And we expect this to be a pretty low scoring game. And the fact that the Salisbury Hornets yep. have spotted Seaforth a 10 0 lead in the first quarter is going to make things demonstrably tough on the Hornets to come back. Well, especially in this environment. You know, when you've got this pressure, you haven't been behind much this season. If you're a Hornet, you've got to find a way to eat into this lead quickly. And again, look at the, the closeout of the top part of the zone. Long jumper missed. Offensive rebound by the Hornets. And they play on. Blocked shot, no foul. Gabby White will bring it up for Seaford. Really good defense from Sidney Ballard. Oh, defense had their back turn. They penetrate, and the kick out for Collins. 13-0. Seaforth, timeout, Salisbury. They are stunned on the Hornet sideline. Nobody saw Seaforth in its second year of school history reaching the state championship. Nobody saw this coming either. It's all a mindset. I mean, they've come out here under control, ready for the moment, and the spacing, the passing, the ability to execute their offense. They're very connected on the defensive end. I mean, they've been able to find opportunities to push it. They've gone up driving kick, getting everybody involved, and knock it down when you got an open shot. Execute. Jay, the three losses suffered by the Hawks this year. Big schools, right? Southwest Guilford lost by three. Grace Christian, independent team, lost by 42. And then Chapel Hill, 4A level, they lost by 11. So with a roster comprised basically of freshmen and sophomores, they have taken on anybody and any everyone who will play them to get them ready to get them seasoned for this kind of moment. And a big look of concern for the Kai Bryce and Simon. What I love it when coaches schedule challenging teams, especially early on, because these teams are so good. You don't want to beat up on everybody. You want to have a tough test to get you ready for this moment. Salisbury misses first. Seven shots, turn it over twice. In the defense, top of this 2-3. I mean, they're active with their hands. Nearly a deflection down low. There's the first points of the game for Salisbury. Haley Dalton on the inside. And will head to the free throw line. That was badly needed. And right here, connected, passing, unselfish play. And Dalton finishes with strength, six feet tall. They've got to get her more looks inside. That is what it takes. Quick ball movement, get it to the middle of the zone, kick out, look opposite. Well executed play out of the timeout by Coach Bryce. You have to be assertive with your shots and your passes. No hesitation, especially in this ball game. 13 3. Look to the inside. Tough one to handle. Ballard plays it. And now we've seen more active defense here by Salisbury, but breaking free is Gabby White. 15 3. C4. And that was excellent from White, moving without the basketball, slashing into the paint. Nice pass over to her. Already into the final minute of his opening quarter. Deep three. Alford, yes. West Shore home three pointer brought to you by West Shore home, bringing happiness to every home. That's a big one. She had 13 points in the regional final against Eastbrook. Talented three-point shooter. Nice job setting up beyond the three-point line. 
Now for the Hawks here, they're probably holding for one. Jump pass deep inside. Batman, good position, blocked away. It's loose. Picked up by Ajaye. Kind of spun it ahead. Pass in the corner, intercepted with seven seconds left. It's a three on two for Salisbury. Noble throws it up, rims it in. Draws the foul with two seconds left in the quarter. And things have turned quickly in favor of the Hornets. Hornets are at their best when they're on the run. You get the turnover, fast break opportunity, push the pace. Just put your head down, drive, find a way to finish. Free throw good, three point play, two takes left. And Gabby White will simply sit on the basketball. End of the quarter. First 13 scored by Seaforth. But Salisbury closing with a flourish at the end of one for the 2A championship. Seaforth up six. Reigning chips. All right, first quarter stats brought to you by the United States Army. Be all you can be in the U.S. Army. Head to GoArmy.com for details. So the only thing that matters is the one down at the bottom. The rebounding margin. Huge for Seaforth. An aggressive play. Now Salisbury coming back here looking better as they close out the first quarter. Points to paint the first quarter, brought to you by Riddle and Brantley, 8-4 at C4. And a lot of those were drives. Gabby White getting into the paint. Injured in a car accident, call Riddle and Brantley. When justice counts, C4 in the home my uniform, saw pass, broke it up, and a steal. And to the hole goes Kyla Bryant. Her first points. It was 13-0 a couple of minutes ago. It's now 15-11, and the game is on. Now zone defense for the Hornets, switching up their look. Well, they're really stretching out the floor as well, giving Gabby White some room to maneuver. Hands on the offensive rebound, and a jump ball call, and the arrow goes the other way. And, and that's the concern for the Hornets, is Gabby White's ability to drive with the zone defense. They've got to cut off her opportunities. They battled here to get the possession back. So the Hornets bring it up the floor. Again, they were 26-3. They started 8-0. First loss up against Panther Creek, who won a 4A Women's Championship earlier today. Stepping through, pass to Noah Furr. Knocks down another three from about the same spot. And that 13-point lead is almost gone for the Hawks. Three-pointer brought to you by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand. And so now how do the young kids respond? Ajaye misses. That shot blocked in the second attempt. She has it back. And in Salisbury, they have found their sea legs. The patience from Seaforth. Still trying to uh, find a hole in this zone. Clapping to Ford is Catherine Leonard. She'll fire a three. Swirl it in. First points for the freshman Leonard. Ball movement there, staying under control, finding an open opportunity, and then you execute. Nice job there on offense. 18-14, Seaforth. Bryant against Ajaye. Got past her, attacks another one, forces the shot. And here comes White and Seaforth. She'll pull up, kind of falling away to her right, missed the shot. Rebound back tap to Salisbury. And now Bryant is kind of being harassed and Nipped from all angles there, fouled in the corner. And that will be charged against Catherine Leonard. They're trying to get the ball out of Bryant's hands. He's going to take this ball out of bounds. I think they've got to look to get paint touches inside. Horton now for. Oh, there's an unforced turnover. Pass out of bounds, thrown off the fingertips of Haley Dalton. Three turnovers on Salisbury. Slowing down the pace. Now the dominance of this Hornet program, five state championships at the 2A level. All five have come since 2004. They won three straight from 09 through 2011. And then one again last year. Their first one was back in 2004. 18-14 Seaforth, a runner on the baseline. Moore tried to grab the offensive rebound, and we get another held ball. It will stay with Seaforth. Our three officials, by the way, all work in their first 
state championship game. And this is a crew that's worked together a couple of times out in the Charlotte area. Darren Turner is our referee. Bo Patterson, Utah Dry are the two umpires. So this crew should have some pretty good chemistry as well. Back in Ballard. Knocked out of her hands and a foul going on Dalton. I like the entry pass into the post. Dalton. Oh, the ball down on the block going, goes up, gets the contact, gets to the line. And here's Ballard, six foot four sophomore. That rebounded edge is still massive in favor of the Hawks. 17 to 4. They have 10 offensive rebounds. Salisbury has four rebounds total. One and two for Ballard. Ballard's been really good on the defensive end as well. And now, different look for Charles Bird here coming out of zone press. A oh, long down court pass, and now for a knocks down a three. So he has three threes in the game already. Another one sponsored by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand. That's how you break the press, move the ball quickly up the floor, find your shooters. That ball stripped, nearly taken away, diving in the sideline, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Seaforth. Well, each team hustling. I mean, they, they know what's at stake tonight. Yeah. And, you know, credit to the Hornets. 13-0 down, four or five yeah. minutes in. No panic. They just stuck with their stuff, made a couple of shots. Defense has been ratcheted up a little bit. And they're shooting potency for the lead here. Playing much better. They stayed confident. That's the big thing. And a kick out. This is for the lead. Rims off. Catherine Leonard plays it ahead. Moore in deep. Bank shot strong from Ballard. Bryant skips it over to Nalfer. Soft little double team there. That's a good look on the inside. Banked in to tie things up. Mary Morgan. Find your open teammate. Little head fake. Dish the ball over and get a better look. Timeout taken by Seaforth. And a great reaction by Lakaya Bryce and the Hornets on the bench. They have now fully erased a 13-0 opening gambit by Seaforth. We're tied halfway through the second quarter. All right, a reminder coming up at halftime. The United Health Center's halftime report. We'll sit down with Commissioner Q Tucker. First half highlights and a whole lot more. The United Health Center is building healthier communities. And later on in the game, Jay and I will have the talk it out and see play of the game. Start the conversation. Reduce underage drinking. Look at all those fans wearing colors of a school not playing in this game. That's because <laughs> Richmond County is in the 4A men's championship later tonight. They are already dominating the Carolina blue of the Dean Dome. Well, at Myers Park, green too. Yep, so, I mean, we're going to see fans filing in throughout this ball game. Richmond, they were, they were here in game one, <laughs> ready to go. And we did their regional final last week, and they are a raucous and proud group with an extraordinarily talented team. They bring energy. Can't wait for that one. we got a good one here. 19 all, Seaforth and Salisbury. Salisbury, the defending champs, rolling down the lane. Jesner can finish. And we're going to foul on Seaforth. <laughs> Number one on Jesner. One last comment about that upcoming 4A men's game. That was originally, the two and 4A were originally scheduled to be played at NC right. State. And then I think after Richmond won with the huge number of fans that they brought, Reynolds Coliseum at NC State was going to be a little too small to accommodate Myers Park and Richmond. So they moved it here. Leonard up the floor. Harassed. Nearly stripped, trying to hold on a possession, and we get another held ball. Possession arrow to Salisbury. The nerves early on in the ball game, I would say, for the Hornets, are things just not clicking. Seaforth coming out on fire. Both teams now settling in tie ball game, and you know, and now it's about adjustments, getting on runs, limiting runs, 
protecting the basket. Salisbury looks really confident right now, particularly on the defensive side. Morgan plays the foul, and this is Noble, and there's the first lead of the championship for Salisbury after spotting Seaforth the first 13 points of the game. Here's Gabby White. She lost the handle. And a turnover by Seaforth. Noble. Chased down from behind. Foul on Seaforth. That'll be on Ryan Moore. There's the 30-year-old head coach for the Hawks, Charles Byrd. Noble here. Dribbles into a triple team, gets the call. Uh, C4 falling back into the zone defense. Watch as Salisbury spreads the floor here, keeps their spacing. Caroline Dalton down the lane, scoops it up. No, got fouled. And that's going to go on Ballard. Well, I like how Salisbury's staying patient and then going into the teeth of the zone defense, getting Dalton involved. Very athletic, six feet tall, talented post player. Four now for Dalton. All five starters have scored. A reminder coming up, United Health Center's halftime report. Hugh Tucker, Commissioner, will join us and more. United Health Center's building healthier communities. Four-point lead now for Salisbury. Gabby White, seven points in the opening quarter, has not scored since. Saved by Salisbury, turnover. Long look ahead, no affair. She got fouled. Early number two on Gabby White. So adjustment for the Hornets. Zone defense, but they trapped out of it and then jumped C4 to get the turnover and then quickly moving the ball up the floor. for the free throw line. Sponsored by NC 529. It's never too early or too late to start saving for education. Inside two minutes for the half. One and two. First any double figures is Noah for with ten. Comes the trap. Well, they're one and two right at Gabby White trying to force her to make some decisions, get the ball out of her hands. And if that's a charge, that's her third, but I believe it's a block. And, and she just eluded that pressure. What a maneuver. And this is where she's really got to be aggressive. I like the take here. Yeah. Good, good call. Yep. Good call. Kind of already tilting back before contact and also one foot inside the restricted area. Your top scorer has got to take over in this yeah. moment. The momentum over on the Hornet side. Got to look for your shot. Second foul on Morgan for Salisbury. Six point win for Salisbury over East Burke in the regional final. C4, 12 point win over the second seed. More pit, 24 20. Salisbury by four. Get the horns played. Screen either way. Bryant now with some space, draws the defender, the kick in the corner. And Noble misses a three. Tip pass to the perimeter, saved by Salisbury. And here comes Bryant. Nearing a minute. Spins on Leonard. Noble, tough shot. And the rebound to Seaforth and then lost over the sideline. Last touch by Gabby White to the Hawks. Well, each team's really fighting right now. I like the ball movement, though, for the Hornets. Moving the ball in the perimeter. You've got to take a better shot. You've got to make it pay off. And work against his own defense. Hornets by four. Less than a minute for the half. Conservative will the Hornets be here? And they've been breaking down this C4 zone pretty easily. And Malford's made a couple of threes from that spot. No one crashing the boards on the offensive glass for the Hornets. The ball's up. Got to have a couple members going to try to get the board. This is Leonard for three. Needed that one. 
Freshman has hit a couple in this half. Draws the Hawks to within one. What a, what a shot there. Young player coming through. And her team needed a bucket. That's huge now. One point deficit, some momentum. Final seconds of the half. I have to imagine Bryant would get the look. Instead, it's Noble. Misses from the foul line. Offensive rebound, and the layup will rattle in from Dalton. Five seconds left. Gabby White from just inside midcourt will heave it off the glass. If you had told Lakai Bryce that we would give up the first 13 points of the game and be leading at halftime, she would have taken that every time. The defending champs have roared back and lead Seaforth at the break by three. You're watching the United Health Center's halftime report. High quality health care regardless of insurance status. How's it going, everybody? I'm Nelson Weston. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the state championship high school basketball games. Who better to join us than our longstanding good friend from Ingalls Markets, Melissa Lovell. Melissa, always a pleasure to see oh, you, my I'm friend. I'm so happy to be here with you. It's championship day. It's championship day indeed. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which now, now Ingalls Markets, y'all provided robust community support, not just for right now, but also for a long, long time now. What inspires y'all to want to frequently get back to high school athletics? Well, this is our community, and mm -hmm. these students are our children and the children of our shoppers. And we we do this in a community sense for everything. So we, we live, work, and shop in these same communities where our stores are. So we're really enriching our whole community by being part of all the things that matter to the families that shop with us. That is terrific work indeed. And speaking of the community and the students, you guys are also famous for y'all's remarkable Tools for Schools program. What is that program all about? And furthermore, how can the good folks at home get started with it today? Well, the program is designed to help teachers, classrooms, students, and principals mm -hmm. get school supplies in the classroom to the students and not have to put, take that money out of their own pocket and bring those to the school. Easy as pie to get in, go get your Ingalls Advantage card, link it to the school of your choice every time you shop you're helping that school speaking of pie you know i'm getting hungry as we speak today is game day what are some of those delicious food items we can pick up from the ingles deli today oh right well first roll in and get your fuel so you're on your way to the to the uh, to the game and then get a sub and some fried chicken eat on your way mm, sounds delicious mm -hmm. indeed always a pleasure to Thank see you my you. friend all right folks time to get back to the game we'll see you soon the united health center's halftime report high quality health care regardless of insurance status Here with North Carolina High School Athletic Association Commissioner Q Tucker. Commissioner Tucker, state championship weekend is always exciting. Yes, it is a big week for us. Uh, it's one of those weeks we look forward to every year about this time. And uh, it's hard to believe that we are uh, sitting on the edge of uh, crowning state champions. What goes into the preparation for such a large state championship? The closer we get to seeing who the actual participants are, then we start to look at the times and uh, start to look at ticket allocations and how all of that works, especially now that we're into this age of digital ticketing, uh, just making sure that all the schools know how to inform their participants, et cetera. We've seen headlines this year indicating numerous behavior issues across the state. How have you addressed those concerns? I don't anticipate that we'll see that this weekend because this is really, this is like the cherry on top of the basketball season. And so everyone really should be about playing at their best level. And then what we want the spectators to do, because that seems to be where the issues have arisen this year, spectators feeling as though that ticket I bought gives me the right to just do do anything I want to in the stands or in the bleachers or say whatever I want to. So. We'll have messages that uh, announcements that will be made on Saturday uh, to try to address some of that and hopefully stem that kind of behavior that could occur. What are the ongoing challenges facing the association? Jane, we still deal with this whole issue of declining numbers in officiating. Uh, we had a committee last summer who studied the situation here in North Carolina, and one of the things that came out of the board meeting was to give a pay increase across the board to all officials. So as we address that, we're trying to do creative things. One of the things that we do is that any new uh, official who says, hey, I want to I join the officiating ranks, then we waive some of those registration fees. Uh, we're looking at trying to come up with an opportunity for our officials 
to perhaps get some grant monies to be able to help, uh, let's say, in terms of educational development. We try to address health and safety, uh, mental health issues. All of those are on the table. So uh, we have just a myriad of, of uh, opportunities, I'll say, to make a difference in the lives of all of the students who participate in our program. And uh, we think education-based athletics is still the, the best thing going. It's the best dropout prevention program there is. And uh, we just continue to dig our heels in and try to do everything we can. We appreciate your time, Commissioner Tucker, and thank you for everything you do for high school sports. You're watching the United Health Center's Halftime Report. High quality health care, regardless of insurance status. 26-23, a halftime lead for Salisbury, overcoming a 13-0 game opening deficit. We're up by three at the break. Patrick here to say, Son Halter back with you inside the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. Take a look at some first half highlights. A lot early for the Hawks. Well, the Hawks were dominant first quarter. They came out firing away, three-point shooting, mid-range jumpers, the ball movement, unselfish play. They were doing it all, really locked in, making it look easy, Patrick, on the offensive end. The Hornets kind of withstood this run early on, called the timeout, and then they went on a run of themselves, getting the ball inside, the ball movement. Gabby Whitehead. Seven points in the opening quarter, finished with eight at the break, and then all of a sudden, one big three-point play got the Hornets unlocked, and then they started kind of solving the defense by Seifert. Got into a rhythm and the outside shooting, and then what really separated them was creating turnovers and using the fast break, finishing on tough shots, and you know, with the run they went on, they went to the halftime break, they had momentum, C4 fought back, three-point deficit for the Hawks right now, but Salisbury really cleaning up after that first quarter. First half stats sponsored by the United States Army. Be all you can be in the U.S. Army. GoArmy.com for details. Big rebounding edge for C4, but now three-point deficit despite being plus 14. Yeah, well, the rebounding battle is huge for them, but the turnovers, the Hornets only three. So on each side, you know, the message is, hey, we've got to improve on the boards for Salisbury. Good job protecting the ball, but on Seaforth, very physical, but too many turnovers. Defending champs up three at the break. 26-23, Salisbury on top of Seaforth. Third quarter is next. To begin the third quarter, Salisbury trying to defend. Lead C fourth by three, 26-23. Quick look at the Riddle and Brantley points in the paint. Injured in an accident call. Riddle and Brantley with justice counts. All right here, Salisbury really turning things around in the second quarter, doing a much better job on the offensive end. C fourth though, what a job they've been able to do here this season. Freshmen, sophomores, predominantly Charles Burr. Amazing effort. And this game means so much to him in this building especially here in Chapel Hill, history with his family being a big UNC fan. Yeah, and Charles Bird's father passed away when he was eight years old. And his father, a huge UNC fan, and same with Charles. And for him to be here and play for his father's memory, this means so much to him. And very close relationship, and tough loss, but this memory of this game is for his father. Follow the third quarter's opening possession since Gabby White to the free throw line. White has two of three from the line. Third foul on Mary Morgan, so she's off the floor for the Hornets. So one more from the NC 529 free throw line. Never too early or too late to start saving for education. White makes one of two. Draws the Hawks to within two, 26-24. And sticking in the 2-3, a little bit of a matchup, but very much extended. And the two at the top of the zone, Peyton Collins and Hannah Ajayi. Seaforth has to create turnovers. Noble misses a three out of the corner. And Ballard just kind of reached over the Hornet to grab that rebound. Three on one, kick to the corner. Collins looks to Leonard. All the way underneath. 
Circles back. There's the kick to Collins. Offensive rebound all little, a little bit short by Ballard. She would like that one back. Foul though on Salisbury. The ball movement, moving it around, putting stress on the defense. And here, no box out. Ballard comes in to get to the line. Physical play down low. Foul on Bryant. And now it's Ballard at the line for a pair. Shooting right into the Hawks student section who made the very short trip from Pittsburgh. One of two, and now a one-point deficit facing Seaford. And last year's state championship MVP, Brian, only two points for Salisbury. Another turnover by the Hornets. The long skip. Collins, give and go for White. And the pass a little bit behind. Some congestion as well. First couple of minutes of this third quarter have been kind of heavily tilted towards Seaford, but they just haven't done enough with it. Yeah. Turnover, and a couple of missed free throws. Not enough production. And the Hornets get it right back. And you've got to take advantage of this opportunity here. Salisbury not clicking right now. Calling for more motion, more movement. Dribble poked away, and here come the Hornets and Bryant. An angle on Gabby White. And listen, free throw is coming. And so Gabby White will pick up her third foul. And this is huge, Bryant. Just a little nudge. A little nudge, not much contact, but still going at the best player for C4. So smart to pick up that third foul against White. Yeah, Gabby was looking over to her head coach and more so to the scores table to see if anybody's coming in for her. Nobody is. So White is going to remain on the floor with three fouls. A couple of free throws made by Bryant and a lead up to three. And they can't afford to take her out, but she's going to have to play smart here and, and make sure she lays off. She can't put herself at risk. Letter plays to White in the high post. Faces up. Nearly lost the handle. She loves that left hand. Forces the short jumper no good. Defense collapsed down on her. Into the corner. Three on the way. A little bit short from Bryant. A rare offensive rebound and the put in by Noble. Noble. Salisbury by Fox. Noble physical down low getting that offensive board. He's really played well tonight. Five points, a couple rebounds, and assist. Biggest lead for Salisbury in the championship. White from the mid range. He's smooth. Good shot. Instead of trying to drive in with the three fouls, possible charge that could be picked up. Just stays mid range, shoots it over the top. Three minutes gone by, third quarter. Foul line jumper, short. Ajayi the rebound. Up ahead, Collins. Leonard throws back. Collins for the tie. Good look from Collins, getting her involved. She was hot in the first quarter. Nice look from the perimeter. The three is sponsored by West Shore Home, bringing happiness to every home. So the Seaforth Hawks have had a 13-point lead dissipate. Salisbury has up, been up by five twice. That's gone. We're dead even. Halfway through the third quarter for the two-way championship. Good ball fake there by Bryant. Missed the shot. White the rebound for the Hawks. Head up. Be careful with three fouls. And she got fouled just at the left elbow by an offer. For the Hornets, you've got to get back in transition defense. White well, got that board and immediately sprinted up the court. 
I think we're going to see her to look for her shot, be more aggressive. She's got to be smart with the three fouls. Peyton Collins starting to heat up as well. Mary Morgan returns for the Hornets with three fouls. Noble is out. Into the corner, Collins across the lane, hooks one to a wide open, Ballard. And the rebound knocked out by C4. Three-point halftime deficit has been deleted by Seaforth. 3.51 left third quarter. Charles Bird, Seaforth Hawks, all level with Salisbury. A reminder coming up in the fourth quarter. The Talk It Out NC play of the game we will unveil. Start the conversation to reduce underage drinking. We'll also have the player of the game presented by myspot.nc.gov. Take control, update your COVID-19 protection. Salisbury 30, C4 30. Five state titles for the Hornets, including one last year at this level. C4 opened up the school doors less than two years ago. Bright has been bottled up defensively by the Hawks. Tip pass gets to her, good ball fake, steps in. And this is a foul line jumper. LFR. No. And the Hawks can shoot for the lead. Leonard pulls up for three. And there's Collins for the rebound. And the recycle for C4. The Hornets have to box out. It's been a huge focus area for them is. C4 just winning on the boards. They're minus 18 on the glass, and that one swirls out, but a foul. Oh, is this going on Gabby White? That's her fourth. Uh-oh. The official indicated kind of a, a hook and turn by number three right there with that right arm. Four fouls on Gabby White. Right, now she, she comes out. To yeah. the bench. That's tough. So mark that down for Charles Bird. How long do you keep her on the bench? Certainly through the end of the quarter. Final three minutes of the third. So Moore is back on the floor for Seafog. Baseline jumper. Noble. Now you become a much more yeah. perimeter-oriented team, right? You know, the offense has to come from Leonard and Collins, those two. And really, you've got to buy time here to get this game into the fourth quarter where you can get Gabby White back in. This is Collins, couple of threes in the contest. Ballard. Baseline maneuver, and throw it away. Noah four races ahead. Two on three goes against Ajay. And now here's Bryant, runner in the lane. That won't go. And in Salisbury, this has to be go time. Their best players out. You've got to really push the pace, stress, see forth, drive in. And, and they're taking good shots, but just not making them. On the curl, Collins. And that's not close from Ballard. Minute and a half for the third, still tied 30 all. But you're right, you do not yeah. want the Hawks to just hang in there with White on the bench with four fouls. This is your this is your real opportunity if you're Salisbury. And Bryant, good ba baseline pass. Noble can't connect. Jaya the rebound. And Seaforth is swallowing down the ball game. The boxing out, no second chance opportunities on the offensive glass. Collins rims out of three. And here comes Salisbury. Noble down the lane. She goes, scoops it up. That is short. Ajaye on the rebound. And it's a three on three action for a moment. Final minute, third quarter. Both teams shooting right around 30% for the championship. And free throws on the way for Seaforth. Peyton Collins will shoot. And that'll be number four on Mary Morgan. So the Hawks cutting, moving without the basketball. Nice pass from Ballard into Collins. A lot of traffic down low. If you're the Hawks, you can get into the fourth quarter with the lead. And what a huge shift with White over on the sideline. Collins for two. 
Schwartz and one more coming. And for Charles Bird, he certainly has to be puzzling out in his head, when do I send Gabby White back into the game? When do I do it? Start of the fourth quarter or later, or is it score dependent? Yeah, I, I think it's score dependent. I mean, I think with her talent and skill level, you can't wait inside of five minutes, but it depends on the score. Ajay rebounds the second free throw, missed. Another crack, and this is Collins. That two is short, deflects to Leonard. And a reach in on Haley Dalton. She thought she had a breakaway. And back to Gabby White, as long as this ball game is within striking distance, I think we'll see him keep her over on the sideline. But right now, your team playing really well. Slowing down the pace. I mean, Gabby White, she is in that first chair. Closest to the scorer's table. She's telling coach, I want to go back in. Kind of hands clenched. Charles Bird examining this offensive set. He wants to hold for the final shot here. Clap of the hands, and here we go with Catherine Leonard. A lot of space on the floor. Ten seconds left. Leonard stopped in the baseline. Throws it up, up front. Collins stripped. It's loose. Collins tries to win it back. There's time here for Bryant on the driving layup. Yes! Count the bucket plus a foul. The clock shows double zero. The official emphatic that the basket counted. A huge opportunity here. Get the turnover, the hustle from Bryant, and then knowing how much time she had right before the clock went to zero. Focus, get the contact, and one opportunity. Now it does look as though they may take a look. Darren Turner over at the scores table briefly. They will not put any more time on the clock. The basket is going to count. They're going to put one-tenth on the clock, which they have now just done. And Bryant will be at the free throw line. So the Hawks were content to hold for the final shot, turn it over at midcourt, and Bryant just beat the horn. And it's a three-point game. And that is what it will be heading to the final eight minutes. The MVP of last year's state championship win for the Hornets comes through in the most clutch moment in the waning seconds of the third quarter. Hornets by three, eight minutes left. Here are the numbers through three quarters, brought to you by the U.S. Army. Be all you can be in the U.S. Army at GoArmy.com. Plus 23 for Seaforth. I mean, wow. Why aren't they winning by, why aren't they winning right now? It's the turnover battle, four to 12. And the both teams shooting right around 30%. There's the points of the paint brought to you by Riddle and Brantley. Injured in an accident, Carl Riddle and Brantley when justice counts. Gotta be white back in the ball game, yep. four fouls. Gotta be careful. Yeah, that is the above the fold story as we begin the fourth quarter for Seaforth. White with four fouls, wearing number three in the white jersey, is back out there. She's their top player. Salisbury ball, three-point lead. Bryant just made that three-point play with one-tenth of a second left in the third quarter on the steal of midcourt. And you don't want to have her get unlocked. Noble, was that deflected? It was. Looking for Dalton underneath. So already a half minute off the clock in this fourth quarter. And Seaforth has not touched it yet. They're methodical here on offense. I mean, no rush at all. This is Bryant. Long one, no effort. Lips out, offensive stick back, yes. Michaela Noble. And a few offensive boards. The fight from Noble down low to tip that ball back. That was huge. It's the fifth offensive rebound of the game for the Hornets. Five point lead. So Gabby White out there with four fouls. Contact out there. No call. Thought about drive in. Pulled up probably because of the four fouls and left the jumper short. Bryant backpedaling. Tightly played. Just can't get through Leonard. 
minute and a half gone by in the fourth quarter. Noble misses the floater. Leonard up the floor, look out behind her being chased by Nofer. Now harassed, we get a reach and with a foul or a jump ball. Timeout. Timeout. Going to stay with the Hawks. 6 17 for the fourth quarter. <laughs> get a look of relief there by Charles Bird. And Jay, the way this fourth quarter has already kind of unfolded. You don't know how many possessions you're going right. to get in this fourth quarter down by five if you're Seaport. Well, it, it's so important. You can't allow this game to get to three possessions because of, A, the pace, but also this is a fourth quarter. This is the end of the ball game. You can't let the momentum completely go to the other side. This is a very important possession here. Smart use of a timeout. Ball kind of in possession there by both teams. You get the timeout, bring your team over the sideline. You can set up a play and your guards are going to have to make good decisions in this situation. And I think Gabby White's got to get a touch. Yeah, a really nice timeout by Charles Bird because he either thought it was going to be a tie-up, which you would have maintained possession because of the arrow, but you want to keep that on your side here, and you need to draw up a good play. Three timeouts now left for Seifel. Hawks down by five. Seaforth has only scored seven points since halftime. Here's Gabby White, 11 points to lead the Hawks. Playing with four fouls. Her strong hand is her left. Leonard takes the screen to the center of the floor. Under six minutes. Ajay stopped top of the lane. Into the corner, Collins lets a three go. Well, White wanted to go after that offensive rebound, but she realized if I do, I'm fouled out. And he stayed flat-footed. Self-control there, pulling back out. Now White is on the, the baseline part of this 2-3 zone. Let's we'll see if Salisbury attacks that side. Three on the way, Noble, no. White battling for the rebound, and again, kind of had to defer. Offensive board, Noble again gets the roll. And the Hornets losing in the rebounding margin, but two key offensive boards, and that was huge. And a timeout taken by Salisbury. The lead is now seven, which is the biggest of the game for the defending champs. 5.22 left in the fourth. There's the lead for Salisbury, 37 to 30 on Seaforth. The Hawks have been dry since it was 30-30 at the 440 mark of the third quarter. They haven't scored a point in almost eight minutes of game time. It's now kind of getting into a little bit choppy waters here, a little bit too deep. If you're not quite sure how to swim, you don't want to go on any further here for the Hawks. And see this deficit grow anymore. You need this possession. You've got to get a bucket. And we'll see the defensive look from the Hornets. It looks like they're set up for a 2-3 zone. The thing about it for Seaforth is Gabby White with four fouls walks it up. Because she's had to kind of relent a little bit, she likes to attack. She wants to be aggressive, but with the four fouls in the state championship, she just can't. She loses a big part of her offensive uh, threat. And Seaforth gives it off to Salisbury. Well, they stood with the man to man defense. Now I'd expect to see the Hornets continue to play at this slow pace. Where they really have deflated the basketball in this fourth quarter. And credit to them, only five turnovers on the night. So they've been able to play fast and play slow, but protect the ball. Noble, she'll take the foul line jumper. Nine point lead on a nine nothing spurt for the Hornets. And this one's slipping away from the Hawks. I think at some point, Gabby White's going to have to go back to what got her here, in and out with that jumper. And even with four fouls, yeah. she needs to get assertive again, even if it means fouling out, because they need that part of their offense. Open three off the side. Would have made it 12. And White challenged that rebound, went out of bounds off of him. Well, and for the Hornets, you know, the boards, they've been dominating that area. But again, this fourth quarter, Loose balls, couple offensive rebounds. This ball 
through the battle, goes out of bounds on C4, doing a much better job with their adjustments, crashing the glass. Bryant gets right past Gabby White, who again had to play lightly. Bryant has that field mid-range jumper. And that three was forced by White. Head hangs a bit. The lead is now 11. Salisbury ball. Now Bryant is going to run away. Pulls up. Fires a jumper. No. And Salisbury needs to turn it up quickly. Two on one chance here. Collins spotted up for three. Won't get the pass. And Salisbury comes out there with it. Hornet fans beginning to believe this is their time. They're now rising to their feet all around the Dean Dome. Hands on the hips of Charles Burr, the C4 head coach, as this one is slipping. Three minutes left. Noble. And there's a turnover, and then that goes off the knee. I think it was off the of Collins. And it is. The Hawks being more aggressive. We've only gotten five turnovers so far tonight. You're really going to have to sell out, trap, take chances, try to get the ball back. Seaforth has not scored in over nine minutes. Bryant thought about driving. Now she'll start again. Bounce pass to the inside, blocked away. Seaforth basketball. Collins out ahead of the pack if she can run down the pass. Saves to her teammate. And there's the first point since the 440 mark of the third. And a timeout taken by the Hawks. They're down by nine. Well, the hustle pays off. You get that bucket, Collins sprinting down. And then now, timeout where you can set up your press, bring everybody over, give them a break here. And really, now, another turnover. You've got to speed up the tempo for the Hornets to try to get the ball back. Let's get to our Talk It Out NC play of the game. We start the conversation to reduce underage breaking. Here it is. And the turnover, this was so important to gain momentum into the fourth quarter. Southbury kind of stagnant at this point, and one right before the buzzer went to zero. Bryant made the play and hit the free throw. Both teams had been dry for about four minutes toward the end of that third quarter until that play, and that's been kind of a pivotal moment in this one. Gabby yeah, White still out there with four fouls for the Hawks, but again, a, a big part of her offense has just been amputated by the four fouls. So she's been kind of settling to pass and take long jumpers and has not been as aggressive on the glass as she was in the first half because of the fear of fouling out. And now you have to play fearlessly to get back into this one for Charles Bird's C4 Hawks. There's 2.34 to go, Salisbury basketball. Up nine. Hawks still have three fouls to give before free throws will be shot for Salisbury. So they can play pretty aggressively here defensively and challenge some passes, go for steals, like that one right there. No tie-up. Arrow would belong to Seaford. Bryant working on White with those four fouls. Got a rounder, lays it in. And Bryant knew it. She knew that White had to hold off. She got around the edge and took the baseline. Back to 11. Collins thinking about it. No time to waste for Seaford. Ajayi for three. Got it. And a timeout by Charles Burke. He takes a glance up at the scoreboard. The clock down by eight with a minute 45 to go. This team's fighting. Yeah, that was a big one now. Another timeout again. Just like the previous timeout. Set up your press defense. You have to sell out for a turnover. Now let's get to our myspot.nc.gov player of the game. Take control. Update your COVID-19 protection. And it's going to be Makai Noble of Salisbury. 13 points, five boards. Really had some big shots. Fighting on the glass. That was a key put back and then getting into the paint area, slashing, doing it all. Impressive performance for the junior. 
43-35. And again, one timeout left now for the Hawks. Only three team fouls have been committed in this second half by Seaford. So you're throwing everything at every pass here, Jay, because so long as it's not Gabby White picking up her fifth foul, you go for the steals, you go for the tips, knowing that you got a couple of shots to force a turnover before you're being penalized and putting them on the line. And the pass does come in. And here's Noble. Morgan in the half court. Ready to have to go. Like, and the Hortons can handle this all day. I mean, we need to see more action here from Seaforth defensively. They need to start taking some gambles here. I think here you've got a trap or a foul. And there is a foul, but again, non-shooting. But you've gone from about 140 to 115, yeah. and you still have two fouls to give. As two of the officials will discuss this foul. And then Seaforth. Hannah Ajayi. And it's an intentional foul. The ruler here on number 12 right there. And there's no play on the ball at all right there by Hannah Ajayi, the junior. So now there will be free throws for Bryant and possession for Salisbury. And that's just a, yeah. a, a poor mistake right there. Uh, C4, you've got to regroup. And now for Bryant. You can really stretch out this lead and almost close it out. It's 12 now for Bryant. And again, he took, could have taken a common foul any time within the 25 seconds prior when he was kind of defending one-on-one. -on -one. He didn't really see any kind of digs at the dribble by the C4 defenders. One and two for Bryant. But that intentional foul was painfully obvious to make. Salisbury by nine. Morgan gets it in. And still two more fouls to give for the Hawks. Uh, good job there, yeah. getting the ball out. They protected the ball all night. And again, that's a foul you don't mind giving up if you're Seaforth. At least a, an attempt was made by Lennon at the dribble. And that will be another non-shooting foul. 103 left in regulation. It's on the backcourt to Bryant. Probably taking another foul here. And yeah, why not? Non-shooting. That's the last non-shooting foul for the Hawks. Forty-four thirty-five. Salisbury leading by nine. And now we will have free throws for Calabria. Again, this is a 30 to 30 game at about the four and a half minute mark of the third quarter. Until Bryant made the steal in midcourt, the layup plus the foul with one tenth of a second left in the third to make it 33 to 30. And C4 didn't score for another five minutes in this fourth quarter. The Hardy's free throw line, Bryant, no good. Rebound to the Hawks. And now a foul in the backcourt on Salisbury. That is the last thing that Salisbury needed right there. But they are not over the limit either. Well, now you've got to quickly move this ball up the court. And to me, you got to start shooting threes. That's the last non-shooting foul taken by Salisbury. So Gabby White lets it roll, lets it roll, lets it roll. Now picks it up. Took it away from Nofer. Pulls up. She got fouled. Stops the clock. 51 seconds left. Couple of free throws for White. And that's not what you want if you're a Hornet. I mean, you want to stop the clock and give her an opportunity. You've got a big cushion right now, so that's in your favor. That's exactly what Seaforth wanted. So we're here for White. White has 12 to go along with 11 rebounds. She is just a sophomore. Down to seven. Now you need a turnover or a quick foul. And hope that the Hornets miss some free throws. It's 
still deep in the backcourt. And there is the foul taken by Peyton Collins. So it'll be a one and one the other way for Salisbury. Four year starter. Kyler Bryant, this is who you want the ball to be in her hands. Four or six from the line tonight. Either way, it's going to be a three possession game. Forty three seconds left. Nine point Good. game, full timeout taken by the Hornets. And that's what you expect out of your senior leader. Made free throws down the stretch. Didn't have a great first half, but everything kind of the inflection point for Bryant was that steal at midcourt at the end of the third. And it turns out that is going to be the vehicle that's going to drive the Hornets to back to back state title. That really changed the game. I mean, that momentum going into the fourth quarter and getting the lead at that point. And just your, your best player stepping up in a big moment, knocking down these free throws. What a career she's had. Because Bryant at that stage, Jay. And four points practically at the end of the third quarter. And now Bryant has 14. She has been the driver of the bus in this fourth quarter. And when they have needed to make good decisions, when they've needed to move the ball around and just take some clock and shorten the game here in the fourth quarter, she's been the one through which this offense is run. I think a couple areas as well. Down 13 nothing to begin the ball game. That presence, the veteran leadership, not to give up, not yeah. to, you know, get helter skelter. They stayed in it, and then also holding on to the ball. Those five turnovers, that's all tonight. I mean, for them, controlling the pace, securing the ball, the one of the catalysts for them. Now you go back after that 13 0 game opening spurt by Seaforth, Salisbury has outscored the Hawks 46 to 24. Three out of the corner, they need it. Rebound on the run, Brian has it, throws it ahead to Noble for the punctuation. 11 point lead. Inside 30 seconds. C4 does have one timeout left. They will hold on to it now. We begin to see some smiles from the Hornet players and some relief on that sideline for the guy Bryce. NCBPS fast break we just saw. Uh, Brian to Noble. Execution, moving the ball quickly up the court. court. It's Coach Bryce, a little fist pump. Well, it makes you wonder what was running through her mind when yeah. it was 13-0 in the first quarter. Well, and she called that timeout and perfectly executed to just get her team to the sideline and regroup. Out of the corner, in and out. Rebound to the Hornets. There will be no more fouls from Seaforth. And there is no Cinderella for the Hawks in the second year of school of existence. The Salisbury Hornets have defended the two-way championship from 13-0 down to a 48-39 victory over Seaforth. Sixth state title in Salisbury history. Tears flowing for the Hawks. And what was a masterful year for Charles Bird and Seaforth. But tears of joy for Salisbury. And thoughts of what could have been for Seaforth. And Charles Bird and his team, they should be so proud of themselves, and they'll be back. It's Bryce and her squad. I mean, this is the emotions of this game. One team. So happy the other one's going through heartbreak. So back to back state titles for Salisbury 55 and 4 over two years of domination at the 2 way level on the women's side. And again, this was a 30 to 30 game in the final seconds of the third quarter before a steal at midcourt by Kyla Bryant. 
a layup and a foul with one tenth of a second left. And I mean, that was what it took to ignite the Hornets and almost kind of take the soul away from Seaforth in that fourth quarter because Bryant and Noble led the way in the final eight minutes. Well, they won three straight titles between 09 and 11. They've gone back to back now. And Jay Sonhalter standing by. Kai Bryce, the head coach for Salisbury, will be joining him here momentarily. Well, you got to imagine what's, what, what, what was going through her mind when they're 13-0 down from the outset. And let's go to Jay with the coach. Coach Bryce, your team down 13 to nothing. You called the timeout. What did you say to regroup your club? I just told them to uh, relax. Basketball is about a game of runs. They came out fire. We, we've been in this situation. We came out fire and teams came back on us. We just had to relax and see the first one go down. And that's what they did. They just relaxed. Well, it seemed like there was that calming presence. You've got so many seniors that really played so well tonight. What was about their effort that gave you confidence? This is what they wanted. They wanted to go out state champs, so they had to dig deep. Um, they've been in preparation since since August to get to this point, and they were just calm. That's what experienced teams do for you. They were just calm. They wasn't rattled, and they told me, they looked me in my eyes and said, Coach, I got you. And that play at the end of the third quarter, the and one by Bryant, that really sparked your team to close out this game. It was uh, at the beginning of the game, she was struggling a little bit. And I think seeing that basket go down for her and her teammates knew that we'll be fine. She just needed one go down. And it, of course, it was an and one plus the free throw. So just seeing that, she'd been the leader of our team. And it just gave all the team confidence in the world. Coach, you're a state champion again. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you, Jay. And there is Kyla Bryant. It took her a while to get on track, but when she did, Drives the train to another state title for the Salisbury Hornets. Our final stats of this two-way women's championship game sponsored by the United States Army. Be all you can be in the U.S. Army. GoArmy.com for details, Jay. Well, this was a fun ball game. I think the reason Salisbury won was the turnover battle, only five. So impressive. Then how about the free throws? You didn't knock them down 11 for 14. They executed in the fourth quarter. A couple big plays, and they slowed down the pace. Points to paint. Presented by Riddle and Brantley. Injured in an accident. Call Riddle and Brantley when justice counts. 28-8, the advantage for Salisbury there. And there's the Kia Bryce, who again trusted her upperclassmen, despite falling behind 13 to nothing to open the game. She never lost faith. Her players never lost faith. And Q Tucker, the commissioner of the NCHSAA, will drape her neck with another championship medal. So it is a final 48-39. Salisbury claims its sixth state title and their second in a row. Well, I'd almost like to take a minute to thank the wonderful sponsor partners and the seed Department of Health and Human Services. Talk it out, NC. United Health Centers, NC 529. Ridland Brantley, Hardy's, North Carolina Department of Public Safety, West Shore Home, Ingalls Markets, and the U.S. Army. All of these sponsor partners, through their contributions to the program, make these championship games possible for you at home. So for Jay Sonhalter, our entire crew, one more game for us, the 4A Men's Championship. But another celebration coming to Salisbury. Hornets defend and take down Seaforth 48 39.